one tablespoon of vinegar going into my milk and that is just enough to make it into that gorgeous tasting buttermilk. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been way more than a minute and I'm just so excited and so happy to be back. So today we're going to be making a chocolate cake. Well, it's basically like a chocolate and a vanilla cake and it's going to be so yummy. It's going to be a fast, very fast paced cake so you can't blink. Keep up with all of the steps and I hope you do enjoy the video. If you do at the end, don't forget to give it a like and please, I need more people on my fam. So subscribe, subscribe. Let's get on with the cake. Okay, so we're gonna be starting with the vanilla bits of the cake. So it's gonna be like um, two layers of chocolate and then two layers of vanilla. So I'm gonna be starting with this. So I've got half a cup of butter here. And to that, I'm gonna add just under a cup of sugar, which is here, just under a cup of sugar. So it's not a full cup, just under a cup to get your measurements right. So I'm gonna dump that in here and we're gonna give it away. So come with me. Here. Okay, so that's done, that's ready. Let's get this party continued. A teaspoon and a half, but I never honestly just get my measurements right. So I'm just gonna put in what seems to be like a teaspoon and a half. Next up, we have the eggs. One, two eggs going in the mix. I love having cake, and I'm not gonna lie about it. I love having it over the holidays. I think everyone just loves cake. This is going for one minute quick mix. Don't move. Okay, so it's supposed to be half a cup. Now, because I'm making my own buttermilk substitute, I'm going to make it just under half a cup so it leaves a bit of space for me to add in my vinegar. One tablespoon of vinegar going into my milk and that is just enough to make it into that gorgeous tasting buttermilk. So here I've got one cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour which I'm going to add. So what I'm going to do, alternate between my flour and my buttermilk and give it all a mix till we combine everything and in the meantime make sure you preheat your oven so i'm gonna add my salt baking powder and baking soda to my flour and in the meantime make sure you preheat your oven i'm gonna bake this at 180 degrees for about 20 25 30 minutes just always make sure you hang around the kitchen i haven't got time on this oven so i'm gonna be very close to the kitchen This gorgeous batter smells good too. I used to lick this when I was a kid, but with all the salmonella and all those craziness going on, I don't anymore, unfortunately. So I'm gonna dunk this in here into oh look at that lovely ripples of goodness going in. Okay, make sure you scrape everything out. I'm getting a spoon. We're gonna bake this at 180 for about 25 to 30 minutes. And we know our cake is cooked and ready to come out of the oven when a knife inserted in comes out nice, crispy and clean. So give it a tap, give it a shake, give it a whiz onto the oven. So this goes in the oven, we're back in a bit. So now we're on to the second phase of this lovely delicious cake and we're going to be doing our chocolate batter. Now this cake is so easy, honestly you need to just make sure you find the right quality of your cocoa powder. 
because your cocoa powder can actually make or break the taste and the authenticity of this chocolate cake so it's a one bowl cake very easy to mix again it's gonna be quite fast so do not even blink those lovely eyes of yours and we're gonna get started to sweet so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna mix in our dry ingredients into this bowl right here so I've got here a cup and a half of flour which I'm just gonna dunk right in and this is my sugar again it's one and a half cups of sugar Again, I'm going to put it in the bowl, okay. Next, we have our cocoa powder. Now I've got in here three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. Mix that right in. Now we're going to go for our salt, baking powder and baking soda. So we're going with half a teaspoon of salt in here. And then we're going to use one teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda is the absolute brain box behind this cake because when you put in your cocoa powder it needs something stronger than baking powder to really activate it so your baking soda has to be used alongside this cake so no shortcuts folks and then we're going to use one teaspoon of baking soda as well okay so now we more or less have our dry ingredients in here and I'm just going to give it a quick mix just to make sure everything is well mixed in and combined this and now the fun part we're going to start with our wet ingredients I'm going to start by adding our vegetable oil now that is a quarter cup I already have a quarter cup of vegetable oil here if you can't find vegetable oils in the store I think that's one of the easiest kind of oils to find you can also use canola or sunflower but just stay away from strong taste strong tasting oils like your peanut um, oil if let off a very strong taste to your cake and you really don't want that so I've got in here even though it looks hmm, should I drink this <laughs> I've got in here three quarters of a cup of buttermilk which I'm also going to add into our dry mixture just dunk it all in as I said it's such an easy cake it's so fun to make just basically dunk all of your ingredients and if you do have them pre-measured it makes it even easier okay so I've got two eggs here which I'm going to put into the cake as well. So in goes egg one. And then we have egg two. Okay. Next, we need to add in our vanilla. So I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of our vanilla here. Again, if, you, if your measurements are not extra, extremely accurate it's not the end of the world now there is a secret ingredient that makes this or takes this chocolate cake to another level and it's such a simple ingredient but sometimes I do find recipes that don't really include it and it should be included now you're gonna add not warm water but hot water so I've got three quarter cup of hot water here the reason why the water has to be hot is to make sure it's hot enough to sort of make your cocoa powder bloom before it gets in the oven it really takes the taste to another level so I'm gonna go to the mixing station to mix all this in I'm gonna alternate this so it doesn't get too um, lumpy and clumpy now the mixing begin in the pan and I'm going to bake this at 180 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes so see you in a bit the cake has been baking for about 35 minutes and it's more or less ready to come out of the oven and I'm going to bring that now overheat right that is hot off the oven so I'm going to leave it to uh, cool down for a bit and then we'll get to icing it later. Now we're going to start with our buttercream and in here I've got one cup of butter. So to make your buttercream extra fluffy, I found out that when you do 
with your butter before you start adding in your powdered sugar or your icing sugar makes the butter more fluffy and more ready to accept the powdered sugar so i'm just going to whisk this for a bit before i add the powdered sugar so here i've got about 400 420 grams of powdered sugar and i'm going to add it in batches again not to overwhelm our butter and make it clumpy so I'm gonna add it in batches of three so follow along very swiftly so to make our buttercream really scrumptious and a little bit special I'm gonna be adding in some chocolate now this is just regular chocolate I got off the shop and I'm gonna add half of it. Now, normally I ignite, I like to do the hot water process of melting down our chocolate, but today I'm gonna to be using the microwave. And what you're aiming for is to make sure your bowl is hot. So you don't wanna put it for more than a minute. So we're just gonna gauge it and hang around the microwave to make sure you don't want to burn the chocolate. And I'm gonna put a little bit of milk just to give it that whole ganache feel. I've got 75 grams of chocolate so I'm just going to break it into little bits and pieces just a little bit what you want is that whole chocolate cocoa comfort goodness sorry if you know what I mean chocolate now this is an experiment we're going to do it together because normally I would always use the hot hot bath method to melt my chocolate. I'm going to put a, just a tiny bit of milk just to help the melting process get quite along. I'm going to put this in the microwave for about 60 seconds. Again, I'm going to stand there and make sure it doesn't get burnt. I might have to stop it before 60 seconds. So here goes. So anyway, it's melted and it was foaming. So you can see just because the mug is slightly hot, that really helps in getting this coming along. Look at that. Oh my God. That is so, 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 so glossy and chocolatey. So let's go on then get this mixed in. So I basically have all of my powdered sugar in the butter. So what we're going to do now is to add in our vanilla, add in the chocolate, a little bit of salt to balance out the sweetness of the icing sugar. And then we're also going to add a little bit of milk just to loosen it up nicely. So I'm just going for like a quarter teaspoon of salt. If you do need some more as you go along, you can always add in some. And I'm going to put in some of this oh glossy, lovely chocolate. Not all at the same time, just half of that. Again, we're going with two teaspoons of vanilla. We give it all a mix. Now, the funny thing is I do like my icing sugar quite savoury, not too salty. I'm going to put a little bit more to give it that whole salt effect. Rest of the chocolate goes in. That is so lovely. And the beauty about this is once it's melted and incorporated into your icing sugar, it stays that way. So there's no nothing about the chocolate getting hardened in between. It just gives it that extra yummy, 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 delicious effect. Now I'm gonna add just probably about a tablespoon of milk. I'll give this all a mix. Right, so cakes are baked and cooled. What I've done now is I've cut the vanilla cake into two separate slices, which is more like a cake disc. Icing, if you can see that, is just nice, soft. Honestly, this if you do put melted chocolate in your icing, it takes it to a whole new zone. So I'm just gonna put this, again, we're going for the four layered cake. I'm just gonna put this, slather it on here. Going on. Once you get the disc cut into two, it's just much easier. All you need to do is just put a layer of buttercream in between each color and you're good to go.
a layer of uh, buttercream frosting, a layer of uh, chocolate. You have to be very careful because it's quite soft. Pat that in. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to opt for something different. I'm going to put the buttercream over the layers and let's see how that comes out. Beautiful cake. It is so moist. Literally, when I was putting the icing on it, you could feel that bounce, that sponginess coming through. A beach sand look, which basically is so easy. All you need is some sugar and some colouring. So I'm just going to put all you literally need. Don't go over the top with your colouring, honestly. You need literally like a drop or two. That's it. Give it a mix. Hand washed I'm now going to put this gorgeous beach sand effect on this cake just make sure you smother it all around if there's a mess around it not to worry you could always uh, clean it up just before you serve this cake trust me this cake is gonna give you a lot of compliments for a long time to come so I'm just gonna put that all around so that's the, not too much because you want raw sugar if you do want an extra effect, OTT, like me, I'm so over the top. You could smatter some all around the side, just again to give it that sprinkle of color and yumminess and goodness. I present this cake to you. This cake is so easy to make. It's something that you can make at home by yourself and just enjoy and share with your friends and family. So I hope you're going to give it a try. I'm going to settle down and have some coffee with this cake and I hope you're going to try it. As I said, it's so easy to make. You can't pass this one up. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did do, make sure you give it a like and don't forget to subscribe if you're not part of the family. So until I come your way again, it's me and my cake. Goodbye. See you next time.